Rightio, welcome to the Gold Coast in southeast Queensland and a especially big welcome to me mates in Victoria who have probably not got the same view as I have here, maybe the inside of their four walls. We are feeling for you down there, brothers, and we, uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. I've done probably, I don't know, 70 or 80 live streams from tournaments. I thought, I've got some stuff here to test. It's the new Daiwa Bait Junkie uh, soft plastics here. Little secret package came up from Daiwa during the week, and we thought, you know what? Rather than just give you all the curated, no problems happened, everything's awesome, they catch a fish every cast sort of deal, why don't we give you a live version of what's going to go on? So we put in at the Gold Coast, it's a fine day, it's a pretty small tide and it's right at the bottom of the tide, so it's not ideal tides. Um, blowing about a 10 knot northwester, it's probably not the ideal um, wind for the Gold Coast either. But we get, I went to the local tackle store yesterday, and this is how serious I'm about this. I actually bought three packs of uh, Great ABT and Fishy Monthly Advertiser TT jig heads there. I've got a hidden weight system. I've got some, uh, some jig head ones. Um, and we're going to give these bait junkie plastics a run. I've got two sorts. I've got the grub, which I admit I've never actually fished before. Um, I've got three colours of the grub. The grubs, I've got the, uh, the Mudblood UV. I've got this one, which is Pearl Gudgeon, and I've got this one, which looks sensational. It's the Bloodworm UV. Uh, so I'm going to fish those ones on some jig heads today. And then I've got one I had fished a little bit before because I had some of the pre-production samples. I've got the minnows, and I've got them in, uh, in AU, this colour here. Um, I've got them in this one called Oil Flash, and that's one I've used in the Queensland Open in a few tournaments before. Uh, in one of the videos we were we shot for Daiwa when they had their 2020 uh, product launch, and then this one here, which is Wakastagi. Sort of more of a bass colour, but we'll see how it goes on the brim today. Now, um, what I've got to do is I've actually, I'm pretty unprepared, and I'm unprepared on purpose. I've got three rods there, braid with leader rods, that I rigged up to fish Mugra on the weekend. Um, Mooger on the weekend was pretty windy and we didn't do much fishing there. So I've got them, they've got the right leaders on, but I'm going to rig these ones up. And uh, and we're going to start here at a pretty popular Gold Coast place. It's called the Trawlers. You probably know it if you saw the um, the Hobie Worlds kayak fishing. Pretty popular spot. You would, If you followed the Queensland Open, you would have heard Blake O'Grady caught 70 fish in here on the, uh, on the first day of the Queensland Open. I caught my first limit here in the first half an hour and moved on. Um, but that was a different situation. That was when there were long line boats in there unloading their catch and washing the decks off and getting the brim excited. So I think it's a little bit different today. It's going to be a lot tougher. I don't see any long line boats in there at all. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to spend a few minutes um, uh, rigging up some lines, rigging up some tackle, show you what I'm doing. Uh, we're going to fish the trawlers. We'll probably fish the bridge, the pool, TSS, and some pontoons going up the river. So I expect the live stream might go for about maybe three hours this morning. So if, if the boss can't hear you at work, get on the headphones and uh, you can listen for the action. My hint is, have the audio on, listen for that sound. <laughs> That's when something's really happening. Um, and feel free to, to share it, join it, uh, come back at lunchtime, see what's going on. And when we've sort of done the range of activities, we'll, uh, we'll log off for the day. It's not gonna be a seven hour live stream like my normal tournament because it's 10.30 now, halfway through a normal tournament session, but we are going to go through and be quite information specific. Um, Nicole Smith is behind the uh, the setup here. She is uh, organising this stream and curating it. So thanks for spending a day away from the office, Nicole. Now you've got plenty to do, but she'll be, she can actually follow on the Fishing Monthly page. Uh, if you've got any questions, maybe drop them on there and I should be able to get to them during today because I'm not panicking about catching a, a five fish limit. So um, let's start rigging up. Eh? I've got my first rod here as a... Uh, uh, legit Designs wild side rod done by JML. It's got a, a die with one of the new Sirtates on it. Let's uh, pull off what I had on. I had an OSP Blitz on here, crankbait. I was, had dreams of crankbaiting some giants up in the trees at uh, Mugra. But I'm going to turn that one. I think I'm going to turn that one into a G-head rig plastic. So I'm going to pull out a TT Headlocks G-head. Um, headlock's important because this is the uh, the soft elastomer style plastic, which really stretchy. You need that jointed uh, or detached keeper on the jig head to keep these plastics up. I've got two sizes, a 1 16th and a 1 20th. I'll put the heavier one on this rod because it's the heavier rod. A 1 16th. I'm going to get cracking with it. I might rig a, a couple of um, a couple of grubs up on this one here. So let's start off by... Uh, 
tying my standard knot. I've got some, um, I think this is about five pound uh, leader. It's uh, Yamatoyo Chinu Harris, which is my preferred one. I think it's the right blend of suppleness, invisibility, and importantly, abrasion resistance. Got a rod and a bit length of leader there, minus whatever I cut off before from the bass fishing. And I tie it on with just a half, a locked half blood knot. Give it a bit of lubrication and away we go. So, so there's my there's my jig head there, just the standard TT. It's actually a heavy wire um, out of the packet. I would have preferred a light wire, but they didn't have any in stock there yesterday. Always get the hook in the fish before you worry about uh, if they're going to bend and break your hook or not. What have I done there? I told you this would be warts and all. That's all the tangles. So um, on this, I really like the look of the. Um, of this one here, this is the uh, the Bloodworm UV bait junkie right there. I'm gonna pull one of those guys off and thread him on just like we do a normal plastic. Now you'll notice that these come in a in like a clam shell on the inside. So so there um there's eight grubs in a pack. I assume they'll retail for you know low teens or just over ten bucks or something like that. Um, but that keeps this plastic well, a from touching your other plastics, but also keeps it in good nick when you pull it out. So so there you go, it's one of the production samples. The pre-production samples I had, man, they were sticky. Um, but these ones, I was talking to Tommy Slater today and we're gonna talk to Tommy a bit later today. We're gonna dial him into this live stream. Um, we're gonna talk to Tommy about uh, about the development process of these baits, but to, it's it feel real, this stuff real soft, it's real stretchy. It floats in the water. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the uh, with the similar plastics on the market. You know, there's been over the years there's been snapbacks made out of this. The guy that's, guys that made the Terminator soft plastics made them. Um, Z-Man make a lot of their plastics out of it. I think Z-Man make all their plastics out of this, and uh, and Dyer have chosen that same material. So pretty simple. I'm not the world's best plastic rigger, but it's going to go on there. I'm going to pull it up over the keeper. And that'll be the first rod rigged up for today. I'm not going to be shy, but it's got its own scent in there and I'll probably add some, maybe some S-Factor or something during the day as well. So that's number one there. Looks the goods. That tail seems to be flicking around a lot in the uh, in the breeze. It's um, it's actually got a line along the top of the plastic there. It sort of tells you where you want, where you can pull the plastic out if you want it to, to you know, be straight up or straight down. I'm not really concerned about a lot of that stuff, so... But I went on the line because I felt like I had to tow the line. Let's get the next one rigged up. The next one will be, what have we got on there? Which is the heaviest? They're both pretty light leaders. I think they're both five pound. Off comes the uh, Arashi spy bait. Great spring bait for bass if they're suspending, especially if they're suspending shallow. And this one, I'm going to put a lighter jig here. This is a 120th TT headlock with the number one heavy hook in it as well. So. Again, I would have got the light if I could. This one will be slightly lighter. We'll probably use this a fair bit for hitting up some pontoons a little bit later in the day. Tides today on the Gold Coast are actually pretty small. If you look at the tide chart, it's, I mean, it's only half of the run that you would normally get. Doesn't mean it's not going to run. Just means that it won't run as hard in some areas. And that actually might make this main river fishery a little bit easier to fish. So again, locked half blood knot there. Get to the point where I need glasses to do this, but I'll get away without it with this heavy five pound stuff. There we go. So we had a UV on, the, let's put a, um, a darker one on this one. That one's called a Mudblood UV. This one here, it's like a darker color. Reminds me of the old Berkeley two grub. It's got a, um, it's got a red fleck through it as well, so. Let me steal one out of the clamshell. Clamshell back in there. It is good having that lid on that clamshell. It sort of keeps all your grubs nice and neat. So let's do the same thing. I might rig this one the other way around. I'll rig it with tail pointing down. It's got some, uh, it's got some pretty cool red flick in there. Don't know if you can hear in the background, but there's a jet ski giving his given something a solid workout. I'm expecting the motor to blow up at any time. So the about jet skiers, they like to do at least six or 8,000 RPM while the thing's on the trailer. It's gotta be good for it. 
go. So it's not, not the world's best. This is indicative of how ordinary I'm at rigging these up. It's taking me a few attempts to get this. <laughs> Hear the police siren? <laughs> Maybe it's someone making a getaway, that noise. Let's give us another go at it. Just want that fat end to sit nicely over the headlocks. There you go, that one's looking better there. A little bit sticky, this plastic. I'll drop him in the water. So it wants to stick to itself a little bit. There you go, she's ready to go now. Tail's getting curled up. We'll see if that fish is, uh, once it's a bit wet, she lets go a bit. So there you go, second one on a jig head. That's a lighter jig head ready to go. This one's being fished on, uh, you probably, anyone that watches my live stream is probably familiar with that rod. It's a seven foot six Nordic stage artist rod. Just to prove this isn't 100% die, where there's a Shimano Stella on it, probably a 10 year old 1000 FD Stella, rigged up with some uh, suffix uh, braid and that five pound leader. So that's number two. This is the third one I'm gonna rig up. And this is, I really thank my mates from WA, particularly Graham Kazbasevich, if you're watching. He taught me how to do the WA rigged little swim bait. So it requires a hidden weight system. And this is a 1 16th number one hidden weight system hook. So I'm going to pull that out. It's not big calm today. There's a little bit of a breeze going, which is actually probably pretty good for the fishing. And I'm going to put that on. I'm going to put it on. Let's try something I've never tried before. An AU coloured bait junkie. I'm going to shove it on that. That little, um, that little Z-Man, not the little Z-Man, the little uh, TT head there. The little shads, they keep, again, keeps a nice, that double blister pack. I'm going to show you how we rig this up. So what was sitting on this rod, this is a, uh, a Daiwa edging rod, um, which is like a yellowtail rod, quite with you on the tip. This one, I think, came from overseas somewhere. Off comes the, the bass vibe and on goes the hidden weight system. So got a fire alarm going off in the background there. This is typical Gold Coast. If you haven't got helicopters, police sirens, burnouts, screaming schoolies, it's not really the Gold Coast, is it? So there you go, locked half blood knot, it goes on there. Now this is the interesting thing, I've got the bait there, I'm gonna come a bit close up so you can see what I'm doing. It's what I call, I call it the WA rig. So I've got my hidden weight system uh, on there. I wanna take a little bite of it through whichever way the bottom side is. So that's the bottom side, I'm just gonna take a little nip, little lip of it and out the bottom. I'm gonna pull that, because it's this elastomer plastic, it'll come right over the top. I'm gonna wiggle it around until it lines up. And it's going to push it straight through laterally through the bait like that so what happens is you end up with a bait where it's it's basically bottom weighted bottom weighted it'll wiggle you can see here it sits along the bottom it'll actually sink horizontally so anyone that knows i like my eco gear aqua fishing they sink horizontally i reckon hot prawns swim horizontally that's a pretty cool horizontal presentation. So that's the three rods we're going to use today. Um, we're going to juggle around some bits and pieces on shore. I'm going to put these away so they don't blow away at the moment. And we're going to fish those trawlers over behind me to see exactly how we go with the new bait junkies. We can go on the floor. Let's go fishing. I'm going to leave fish on the, on the back here. Let's point that in towards the... You can see them there, those white dots, they're schools of fish. They're not moving much. Oh, bite. There you go, so maybe just get their attention. Let's see it sinking there. There you go. Second cast with the bait junkie. Oh, and guess what I just remembered? I don't have a net. <laughs> so that took two casts. That's on the WA rigged uh, the minnow. 
can't remember what that colour is, but uh, I will remember eventually. Not a legal fish, but hey, there you go. Ow! I bet you spiked me, mate. And again, that bait folds up around the thing, but because it's that elastomer plastic, I can pull it out, sits dead straight again, and that's good for another fish. Get this into some nice places now, that thing skips. Plenty of people here buying their prawns off the trawler. There's a bite. This one. It's a bit bigger. Get out of there. No net again. Ooh, look at that thing. <laughs> Goes all right. And he has absolutely swallowed the hell out of that. Swallowed the hell out of it. That's a good fish. That's near 30 centimetres, I reckon. And that bait chunky is down his... Oops. <laughs> Did you just get food on by Brim? <laughs> That's the, uh, blood yep, the blood worm. But look at that, there you go. That brim, I've actually, it's cut the tail a little bit. Give us a little bit of the history of this uh, bait junkie line of plastics, and in particular the two ones we're, um, we're fishing this morning, which is the minnow and the grub. Give us bait junkie 101, please. Yeah, so it's um, it's been a long time in the works, so we kind of started this um, probably... Um, it doesn't matter if I can hear you, mate, the people can hear you, so. Um, so it's, um, it's been a long time coming, but the, the bait junkie really, um, I guess it, it came from a couple of us that, that wanted to find a better, you know, we thought we might make a better um, offering. And the, and the grub especially is one that we spent a long time working on, um, trying to get a better swimming action on the drop on a light jig head. So that's where that tail design um, really comes into it, that really thin um, tail and the fact that the, the tail runs parallel to the body. Um, that enables the grub to swim uh, with a more, it's a tighter um, action, so it doesn't, it doesn't stray from the centre as much, which the result of that is that it'll swim on a lighter weight jig head on the drop because there's not as much um, movement in the tail, it's a more finesse movement, um, which I think for a lot of broom guys, especially that's that's what we're looking for, is we're looking for a grub that swims on a on a 20th uh, jig head or something like that, so that was really the whole kind of design premise around that, that two and a half inch grub. So we've been fishing that this morning, Tommy, and I think the, the trade-off for the, for the thinner tail is the fact that it's probably a little bit more delicate. I've, I've lost a few tails on this morning. I think one might have been a leather jacket or a toadfish, but another one when I caught a brim, it was actually torn a little bit. Do you expect the uh, you'll churn through a few more plastics because it's that uh, that lighter build? Uh, I guess that's that's always the compromise that you make between del uh, like finesse action and then durability. But I guess the the flip side to that is. Um, I guess it's it's still going to be heaps more durable than a standard PVC or a bio bait yep. um, type material. So while it might not last a hundred fish, it'll last seventy five fish, and you'll you'll actually catch more anyway. So I think it's a trade off that certainly in in our testing we were we were pretty happy with the durability, and I yeah. haven't noticed any real difference between that and, and other baits on the market. Understood, mate, and uh, I think that's definitely brought home when I fish the uh, the minnow on that. You know, you've seen the WA rig I've been using on the way I like rigging it, mainly because I'm no good at threading it through the middle straight. But um, you know that that eye end of the, the the front end of the plastic cops some real punishment with that. And uh, in the Queensland Open, I think I fished with one bait the whole time, and this morning we've caught a few fish on the one bait as well. So as soon as that thickness of the plastic goes up just a little bit, man, these things are virtually bulletproof. Yeah, for sure. And that minnow. Um that you've been throwing that the the good thing about you know rigging them like you rig that hidden weight style is that um, skinny waist in the middle of the lure you, your hook comes out just before that waist so you kind of that waist is is put there so it can have a maximum amount of swimming action 
um, and it gives you a really nice guide of where your hook placement should be. Um, yep. You know, if your hook's just before that waist, then you've then you've pretty much rigged it up perfectly. Yes. No, no, and I noticed that because it sort of pivots, you know, it's got that underneath weighted bait, so it, it sinks uh, fairly flat. But when it with that pivot on the back, it really gets like a, a neat swimming action. It nearly, it has this sort of harmonic point in the middle that it, that it rotates around. It looks really, really good in the water. It actually takes a little bit of speed. You know, if you wanted to fish for little pelagics or something with that rig, you'd, you'd catch them, no worries. But uh, for me, I love the fact that that plastic can sink horizontally, and I think that's a real, a real winner for Brim because you know we all know which way a prawn swims to the bottom. He doesn't swim like that. He just he yeah. sort of swims along this way. So um, for sure. Mate, Tell me how many how many colours are in the range, and tell us about ETA on the bait junkie plastics into the market. So there's there's anywhere between fifteen to eighteen colours depending on the shape. Um, there's different colours for each shapes, but um, in something like the grub, I think there's fifteen in the minnows. There's actually a few more because we we cater to some flathead stuff with pinks and and yep. bass stuff as well. Um, so there's eighteen colours in the in the little minnows, but and they'll actually be in shops. Um, we're busy unpacking containers at the moment, so they'll be in shops on the 16th of September. So. Wow, so only a few weeks away until we can uh, the general public can get hold of them. Mate, I really like that uh, internal clamshell that we have inside there. The baits all come out really, really well, and there's, you know, organising your baits doesn't seem to be a problem. Like, laying them in one tray is all right, but when you pull one out, sometimes other baits come with it. This is a pretty cool way to organise it. Who's, whose fault yeah, is that? And is that, that your fault? Yeah, so that, that was always something I got really frustrated with because when, yeah, as you say, you used to pull one bait out and you'd get half the pack with it um, and then you'd never quite get them back in properly because they didn't have, you couldn't slide them into the pack because um, they'd get caught up. So having that double clam, um, you know, it was, it was uh, I'd hate to admit how long we spent just trying to get the clamshell packaging correct, but it was definitely uh, worth it in the end. I think it just makes them so much more user friendly. Now, mate, we were down doing the, the live launch of Bait Junkie, amongst other Daiwa products earlier this year, and uh, your website had some really cool sections on outlining this whole process, how you rig them, how you fish them. Uh, what's the website that people can go to if they need to get more information? Yeah, so everything uh, is up on the Daiwa Fishing website, so www.daiwafishing.com.au. If you hit lures, um, you'll scroll, find the Bait Junkies, and you, can, and you can go and see all the colours. You can see them under UV light. Um, we're also building a colour selector tool uh, at the moment, which will go live on the website for the launch of the of the bait. So you'll be able to go in there and say, well, if I'm fishing clear water on a sunny day, what colours should I be looking at? If I'm fishing uh, dirty water on a sunny day, what colours should I be looking at? And we've, we've done the breakdown with myself and Chris Hicks and Mark Crumpton. We've all put our um, heads together and said, well, here's what I'll pick on a, on a, on those given conditions. And we've put that online for everyone so you can know exactly what uh, what colour you should be looking at. I know why you didn't ask ABT non-boaters about what colour they should be looking at. They only ever fish one colour the whole time anyway, <laughs> don't they? That's why, that's why you ask boaters. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, something else you commented on a little bit this morning, I've been tuning in and out amongst doing some other things in the office, but the, the skipping ability of the two-and-a-half-inch grub, um, and that's something that... Um, we probably haven't spoken about enough to be honest but it's something that was very deliberate in how we made the grub body um, making the grub body just fractionally longer um, than others on the market and and making those more the smaller but more kind of aggressive ribbing um, on the body itself when you skip that bait now um, those little baby ribs don't tend to catch the the water so much and they kind of give you a little air pocket to kind of glide the bait across the yep. surface. And it's definitely been something that we've noticed is the, the ease of skipping um, that the grubs have. I've, I've been really impressed with, you know, fishing in Middle Harbour and in Sydney Harbour the last year, testing them, um, the ability to skip them a long way and keep them, you know, really low to the water because you don't want it skipping obviously too high. You don't want it, yep. um, you know, you kind of want it that perfect um, skip and that's something that I think definitely has been quite deliberate and, and something that's probably hard to perceive to someone without actually someone using it for the first time and actually trying it. 
Yeah, well, I wasn't really aware of it until I put the first one on and skipped it up between a trawler, and it skipped pretty well. Normally, you have to work on a bait to, to get all the balance right for it to really get that skipping action, and you're correct. You don't want it to hit and, and go up at 45 degrees because that's just as bad as, uh, as not getting it in there in the first place, mate. So, mate, thanks for taking the time to join us this morning and keeping an eye on your little baby out in the field with some plastics muppet like me trying to throw it. I have just pulled up to the bridge here at uh, Southport, so I think we're going to catch a few more fish, this time on the jig head rig grubs. So tell your boss that you're working and watch and see what happens, eh? So uh, I'm going to sign off now and we're going to go back to doing some fishing. Oh, there's one following it. He got it. <laughs> Man, definitely cruising the walls already. He raced out and grabbed it. And I just saw him come and stopped it and he came and he chuffed it. Looked right in the, in the bottom of the mouth. See that plastic folds away so they can get hooked on that uh, on that hidden weight system. Better fish. Donk. <laughs> That's a proper one on the Gold Coast. Look at him. <laughs> Where were you in the Queensland Open? And he's got that bait junkie stuffed down his pie hole. Look at it. Give him like 30 as well, that fish. What did you eat, mate? Bait, bait junkie. They definitely like a run-in tide, these fish. Oh, that one followed it up. That's a good fish, that one. Come on, mate. Come out and have another go. Oh, look at them on the back. There's one there. And there's about 20 on the back of this pontoon. Smash the bait, junkie. This one. Oh, look at them all in there. There's about 20 good ones. I speed them off there, I reckon. <laughs> Get out of there, mate. Get out of there. That's a good fish for the Gold Coast. Oh, we pulled out. Just gonna get away from that boat. That's it. Mm. Oh, it's disappeared down his mouth. <laughs> Why am I smiling under a buff? <laughs> he smoked at that thing. There's about 20 fish in there, all about the same size. Nice one. That's the third nice one for the day. Feels like they're going to really start chewing this joint soon. Chewing. They're starting to chew. It's 
was in the side of the face, obviously. That was a skip cast right up inside that boat there. Not that big, just looked outside the head. And it's hooked on the, on the gill plate. He is a little fatty though. Gone. So there you go. We're going to finish off the day with that fish there. It's been a really good day testing the bait junkie soft plastics. This was on a hidden weight system with the uh, the grub. And as usual, he's got it way down his mouth and not get it out. But the minnow was quite good as well. And um, you know, I'm looking forward to finding the the ways to to improve those and you know get confident with these baits. But um, I've been through two baits today. I lost two tails off two of the grubs and then none off any of the minnows. So I'm gonna let that guy go. Thanks for joining in at the live stream today. There's some, um, you know, there, we're going to edit it down into a 10 or 15 minute version so that you can uh, use the bait junkie grubs. Catch fish like that. Steve Morgan checking out Fishing Monthly magazine.